Okay, <clears throat> welcome back to my new GN4 tutorial series of uh, how to create uh, the first project um, with GN4. And if I explained last time already um, how to create your detector geometry, but if we would create a particle now, it would not work at all, uh, as GN4 also gives an error message, uh, as I have shown last time, uh, just because GN4 does not know at the moment how this particle would interact with the detector. Yeah? So for that, we need something which is called a physics list and which then GN4 tells what should happen. And uh, yeah, for that, we create basically a new class, which we can just call maybe my physics list, which inherits from the uh, class G4V modular physics list, which is implemented in GN4. And then we can register physics there in that. Uh, so yeah. For that purpose, we create a new file, uh, two new files, which is um, which we just call physics.cc and physics.hh. And now in the header file, we do it as we have done it in the detector construction. Um, we use this uh, little trick in order to avoid double integration or include. Uh, so it would be just physics underscore sh define physics edge edge and if okay and now we uh, use the class name uh, which I said should be my physics list yeah just let's call it my physics list and it inherits uh, publicly from g4v modular physics list and uh, yeah we can directly include that so we will not forget it later uh, the, the name of the class is the name of the header so we can uh, yeah we can directly use that okay and now uh, we have to write again of course as usual uh, constructor here and the destructor okay um, in this case um, we could directly uh, write the definition here inside, but in order to be consistent with the other uh, parts that we will write, it's better to maybe put this into a separate file. So here in that we could uh, then just insert the physics edge edge file and then create the constructor. My physics list, my physics list. And in this constructor, we have to then def register the uh, physics list that we want to define. Of course, we could define our own one also here, which I maybe explain in one of the later vi videos. But um, most of the physics that you want to use is already implemented in GN4. And um, two of them I will use now because the final goal would be, uh, according to what I think now, is to create a Cherenkov detector. Uh, um, and for that, you need basically two interactions, which are important. Uh, and uh, one, uh, one is uh, called G4 EM standard physics. Um, so as the name um, implies already, we are dealing now with electromagnetic electromagnetic interaction yeah we don't want we want to avoid hadronic interaction completely yeah? it's also uh, what my recommendation is to use only the physics that is really required for your application yeah? and which has an influence on your measurement because the more physics you implement the longer it takes for calculation usually so it's better to avoid that and uh, now at the moment we will only concentrate on electromagnetic physics and another one, uh, but because as I said, we want to create a Cherenkov detector, maybe also with some scintillation light later. So we want to implement the physics list optical physics, uh, which deals with optical photons. This is also very important. Otherwise, there will be no Cherenkov light available. Yeah. And then now we can also uh, write here for the constructor and the moment nothing. Okay, yeah, this is in principle everything. Now our physics is registered and we have to implement this now in our main file and tell this to the run manager to make sure that it loads the right physics. So we include the header file physics.hh and 
in the same way how we initialize the construction, we also can now initialize the physics list. And hopefully if I didn't do anything wrong, it should work out of the box, but it will not work because I think, uh, again, I forgot some header files. So the good thing in GN4 is that the class name is always equal to the uh, file name. So when we know what kind of uh, class we use, we know already which header file we have to implement. And I think this should be now sufficient. In order to test it, uh, we have to run again CMake. As I said, this is important. Whenever you add a new file, you have to run it. And then we can make it. And of course, uh, as usual, there is at least one error in this. So we have to write a semicolon at the end. And uh, yeah, uh, it's private, of course, because I have to one time define it as public. And now we can run it again. And hopefully now it runs. Perfect. And now we open it and it's empty again. And now we have to add again. <laughs> Initialize is already implemented, correct? Okay. So um, yeah, uh, in principle, um, everything is included now. To see the geometry and to run it, at least you can see here, it's not giving you any uh, error message. So everything seems to work very well. The only thing is now that we have to tell the GN4 to display. And um, yeah, for that we uh, can use our UI manager and instead of always writing the commands uh, into that, we can one time put it uh, into our code, so we don't need to care about this in the future. So um, we use this uh, UI manager that we uh, have uh, that we have defined before, and we have to use then the function apply command, and then uh, we use from the messenger of uh, GN4 uh, the folder uh, we go into the folder vis for visualization and use the command open ogl for opengl yeah so now basically uh, so basically now we can uh, compile it and um, yeah now it doesn't give any error message and now we can just run it to see what happens and as you can see now finally we can see here the opengl window but unfortunately it's still empty. Uh, so something we have to add additionally, we have to tell GN4 that it should also draw the volume. Later we also have to do the same for the trajectory and so on. But for the time being, we have to tell to GN4 that it should draw all volumes. Okay, and this we will uh, try now again, we compile it and we run it. And as you can see, it shows you the mother volume that we created. So it's not very spectacular at the moment, of course. Uh, nothing is included, uh, no particle and so on. And if I would run it now, I guess it crashes. Yes, correct. Because many things are still not available, especially the stepping and so on. Um, yeah, and the track information, particle gun. But uh, at least it shows the volume already. And uh, if we can also use another command here, um, which I am usually using uh, setting the uh, the folder is this viewer set and then I will put a little bit more here otherwise it will be hidden by the camera uh, view point vector one 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 so uh, with this viewpoint vector, you can change the initial position, how it looks on the um, on the detector. And uh, this we will try now. Um, if I run it now, okay, still uh, there's a problem. One has to change the size of the window, then it works. And then, um, yeah, you can see the standard viewport was, was changed compared to the first time, but it doesn't matter. Uh, at the end, you can fully interactively rotate and change this. Yeah? You can do much more with that. But all these things I will explain in one of the later videos. For the time being now, 
uh, we are quite advanced. Um, we have our first program, we have the detector geometry, we have defined the physics list. And now in the next video, then I will finally explain how to create the particle gun. And then we are ready to do our simulations. Huh? So it was in, in total much faster than I expected. Okay, I hope you liked it. Um, please stay tuned. Uh, subscribe if you have not done so far. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you soon back.